Okay, so the card we're making today is using the MFT uh, Beast Friend set. And so this is a sample that I've already gone ahead and made. Um, I used a paper pad I bought at Joann's that I'll show you. Um, it's Warm and Cozy by Jen Hadfield. Um, this is a really uh, great paper pad. It has a ton of really cool paper in it. The only thing I didn't realize is that you get one of every kind of paper that's in here. So I can't recreate this exactly. Um, like I don't have enough to do another heart or this uh, plaid background that I really like. Um, but I can make something similar. Um, so we'll pick out a different pattern out of here and then um, make a pretty uh, similar card so you can see what I did. Um, with my background, I used uh, Lawn Fawn's stitch rectangles and I used MFT's banner dies and then I used a heart die that I had from Concord and Ninth in my stash. Um, so really happy with how it turned out and then I just colored with my zigs. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you um, how I made this. All right. So with this card, we want to make sure we pick um, two coordinating papers. And so with my paper, I want something that's kind of like a plaidish uh, background. So let's find something kind of fall themed. So either like this red would be nice or I was thinking about this I liked for like the wood grain. I like this for the heart. This is kind of my second choice when I was making that card. So we could go ahead and I'm thinking to use that for the heart. Um, this one is cool too. And then we need something that goes along with this that coordinates really well. So I'm thinking some kind of a plaid again, but I'd like a smaller um, plaid. It's like this would be perfect. And we've got some red elements anyway, so that'll pick that up. So this is gonna be our paper. Then we'll die cut our heart out of this. I think will be really great. I don't make my own card bases. So what I use is I um, buy a set of cards and I will grab those to show you out of my bin. I have them, they're in here. Too many things. There we go. Okay. Let me show you what I use. So I get these like at Meyer. I get them at Joann's. This huge set I only be able to find at Meyer, and I really like it. I wish it didn't come with the envelopes because I buy Gina K envelopes. But if you don't want to buy like the expensive, make your own uh, card bases, these are perfectly fine. Um, so it's just A2 size. Um, I believe these are made by looks like Coordinations is the brand. And so I just take one of these out when I'm making a card, and then that's my base. And it's already folded too, so they're, they're really great. I'm just going to set this to the side. So I usually fold my base, and then I'm just going to kind of plan out what I want to do. And yeah, I think that'll be really cool together. So for our background of our card. We're going to cut this out using the stitch rectangle die. And I have the lawn palm set. So I'm going to use the biggest one. The size is A2. And I'm going to line it up the best I can. And then I always just use some washi tape from my stash. I know some people use like post-it tape, but I just use this. And I just use a little bit to hold it in place. So that way when I run this through my die cut machine, um, it's not going to move around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And 
since I want to run these right after the other, I'm going to go ahead and find my Concord and Ninth set. Again, this is the Heartstrings die set, and it comes with this great big heart that is awesome. It's kind of why I bought this set, to be honest, because I saw the heart dies from Hero Arts, like all the different sizes ones, and I really liked them, but I kind of only needed one. Um, so I'm just going to kind of line this up where I want it. And same thing, I'm going to take a little bit of washi tape. And this way I can just cut these out with my die cut machine uh, right together. These are the two biggest things I need to cut off. And actually while I'm doing that, I might as well cut out my um, banner. So this is the stitched banner set from MFT. I didn't have anything like this. Um, it comes with three different sizes. I'm using the largest size for this card because my sentiment will fit in this. And then as you can see, I've already used part of this. So I'm just gonna get it as close as possible so I don't waste any paper. Because this is my really good um, Gina K craft paper that I just started using. And again, we're just gonna put some washi tape down. And those are our three main components besides our Yetis. And so that way we've already got those cut out all at once. And I'm gonna show you a trick for um, stamping and cutting out the Yetis in a little bit. With my die cut machine, um, these are my three plates. So you're gonna layer A and then C, and then B goes on top to hold your stuff in place. And then I have a cuddle bug from Cricut, I believe. It's real simple. Um, just put it up on your desktop. And I like that um, it holds in place pretty well so it doesn't move around. So I'm going to start and do my banner and run that through. And it's kind of have to hold it down so it doesn't move all over the place. So I've got that, put that to the side. I'm gonna run my heart, which I really like that paper. It's awesome paper. And you might hear that sound a little bit, like it, you feel like it's gonna crack, but it won't, it'll be fine. And then I'm gonna run my um, border my background and it might actually there you go just put it that way usually these six by six papers they fit great in the in the die cut machine you just have to uh, line them up a little bit that cut through. It's being a little temperamental. So I just moved like my whole thing here. Okay, I think that cut through. I think it's fine. Um, no, that did not cut through. It's okay. So we're just going to move this um, back through here. If it doesn't cut all the way through, you can just run it back through. There we go. Just stuck on something before, I guess. Okay, I'm just going to set this to the side. I will need it again when I cut out my Yetis, but right now I don't need it. Um, I usually like to use the, um, let's see what it's called. It's out right now. I need to buy some more. Um, the Kukuyo Dot Liner. This stuff is amazing. Um, I just ran out, probably, not just ran out, probably a couple months ago, um, and I haven't bought any more because it's kind of expensive. Um, I tried to use this Elmer's stuff that's just kind of cheap. You get it at Joann's, whatever. It's not that great. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but I did buy some Tombow liquid glue, so I'm going to try and use this today since my favorite uh, dot liner is out. So we have all of our pieces. And you just want to carefully 
pull up your washi. I recommend getting washi that's really good. Like don't get the cheap washi because it will probably rip your paper. Um, I, I notice a huge difference when I use more expensive washi than cheaper washi. Um, and so this is like the Scotch brand of washi and it works really well. And I think, yeah, I'll still be able to get like a heart if I want to make another card. So that's awesome. Put that to the side. And we're going to take our card base. And we've got a rectangle. It's all cut out. And again, carefully just peel this off. And I usually just stick this on the edge of my desk so I can reuse it. At least for like one project. And then I put my dies to the side so I don't lose them. And my scraps. And then you can see here that you can line this up. And then this is going to be our little heart in the center. So same kind of pattern as this. We're just using different paper because that paper pad only gives us one of each. I don't know why. That's just how it is. Um, so yeah, so I just kind of line this up the best it can. And then I'm going to try this uh, Tombow liquid glue and see what it does. I think it'll work out pretty well though. Oh yeah, this is good. So it's got a really fine tip on it, which is good. Um, so you don't feel like you need to use a ton of it. Like it's definitely gonna hold your project. And then I always use my craft mat to line everything up. This looks like it'll dry clear too, which is good. So if I mess up, I'll be fine. And then I just kind of line this up the best I can. Yeah, the, it's nice because this is, this is clear. So it's going to let you move it around in case you um, mess up like I just did. <laughs> and so it's pretty centered. Um, could go up a little bit. Yeah, this is very forgiving glue. This is good. And my one corner is a little, a little low there. But yeah, that's good. So that's our base. Okay, I really like that glue. This is seriously the first time I've used this. I just bought this. Because Joann's um, and Hobby Lobby and Michael's, they don't sell the, the Tombow stuff I want. Okay, so this is cool. I just noticed this is like a broader tip and this is a pen tip. So it's like double-sided. That's really cool. Definitely liking the pen tip for right now, um, but good to know. And I'm just gonna kind of color on this heart. Again, not using a ton of glue, just enough to hold it down. Okay, it's good to know that they have this kind of glue out here because, or out there because it's really good. Okay. And then I'm just going to line up kind of the top of this heart with the top of where that border is. Make sure it's straight. And then just press it down. And so that's pretty centered. Pretty close to how we had the other one. So really loving the patterns of this together. And then our other thing we cut out was our banner, which we don't really need to mess with quite this minute. But that's gonna go over there to the side. So I'm gonna set these dies over to the side so I don't lose them, accidentally throw them away, etc. Um, so there's that. And then we're still gonna need our die cut machine in a little bit. Just not right this minute. I'm also gonna be using some glue dots for really tiny things that need glued down. Um, this is the stamp set, and I already had these stamps in my Misty because I was using them earlier to make the card I showed you. So the great thing about using the Misty is you can have all your stamps in here, and with your die cuts, you can basically, if I had the Misty open, you could line all these up and then place your stamps inside, and then your Misty is gonna pick up the stamps. Which is really great. So, I'm gonna position this. And so I'll show you after I stamp. 
um, how this is going to work. So I'm just going to be able to line up my stamps. It's pretty close. Need a little more space over here. Trying to reuse this paper and it's like exactly the right size. Okay, so these are all my stamps. I've got them all lined up. These are going to line up perfectly with my die cuts, as you can see. Well, almost perfectly. Perfectly if I put them in the right spot, which they are once we do them. So for my ink, because I'm going to do a little bit of coloring, I use my VersaFine. And so I'm just going to ink this up, which you can't see, but move this over. So I'm going to ink this up, and then I'll move this over so you can see. Since I'm filming on my phone, it's a little hard to uh, show every part of the process, but at least I'm showing most of it. And so if you don't have a Misty, I highly recommend one because I never stamp everything perfect the first time. And so this really helps you line everything up. So there you can see Stampy and the Misty. That did pretty good. There's a few little spots. He lost his foot, I'm not sure why, but he did. And so we're just gonna ink this up again. Sorry, this part's off camera. <laughs> But I think we all know how to ink up stamps. Um, and again, I'll put my Misty back into view. And just get a really good impression. So it usually takes about twice. Um, these are also brand new stamps. I've only been using them today. So it takes a little bit of time. But that should be pretty good. Yep, perfect. He's got his foot now. Okay, so we're just going to take this off. And I want to do a little bit of coloring on this. Before I do that, I'm just going to leave these on here because I'm sure I'll use them again. Before I put them away and, color and clean them and everything. Um, I'm going to heat set this a little bit because I didn't do that as well last time. And I smeared some of my zig markers. So I'm going to use my heat gun. It'll be a little tiny bit loud, but worth it. So... kind of helps with your ink um, so when you're coloring it doesn't smear so this looks pretty dry um, I'm not gonna color all of these right now um, because I'm not sure um, how I'm gonna color all these so I colored what I wanted and then cut out things but I can always go back and color like these trees and stuff later in the presents it's not a big deal so I'm gonna go ahead and color. Um, I know I want all the Yeti's faces to be like this flesh color, and then I'm just gonna leave them white. Um, so I make sure if you can see. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of coloring. Um, so again, this is flesh color. And I'm just going to color up his ears and his face. Um, this is one that I want to use for the card that I'm making. And since this dried, and since this is a coloring friendly ink, we should be fine. And this shouldn't smear. So I'm just going to go through and go ahead and color what I know I want to use. Um, I can always use these for other projects. But this is the whole set, so I stamped the whole set at once, and then I'm going to cut the whole set out at once. But I don't have to color all of these right now. Just what I'm going to use for the most part. So I know, like, this little guy I'm going to use. I'm just going to do all their faces first. I feel like would be the easiest thing to do. 
I'm not sure if like the bottom of his feet should be flesh colored or not. Probably not. They're probably just white. But I am going to go ahead and color all of their little faces. And I'm not an expert at coloring. I just kind of lay down some color and it seems to work out pretty well. Um, but I'm not, by no means am I an expert. Especially at my zigs, I haven't had them for very long. I got them like in June, so only a few months. I'm gonna go ahead and color. It's too early for Christmas, so I won't be using this little guy today, but might as well go ahead and color him up. There's, there's him, and then I want to color this little guy's mug. When I was making my card earlier, I completely like wrecked this whole thing. It was, it was bad. <laughs> I don't know if I like didn't let it dry enough or what. Um, but I will be drying this with a heat gun this time so I don't mess up any of the color. And then I want his scarf to be red, and this is where I messed up last time, is I think some of the red got on his fur, so I have to be real careful. Real careful and make sure I let this dry. Because these are very watery compared to other stuff. And I'm just using these normal, I'm not using like as you can see, I'm not using like a water brush pen or anything. I don't have a whole ton of space to color. And so I'm just kind of coloring these however. But I do like the little, the little scarf he has. It's very cute. So I'm trying not to get any red on his face this time. That's what I did last time. <laughs> And I ended up, that's why I ended up not using this little guy for the card that I showed you. I wanted to use him. And then I messed him up. <laughs> so we'll let him dry. Um, let's see. That's pretty much all we need to color right now. We could color, could color and some other stuff, but we can color those later. Um, so I'm going to take my heat gun again to make sure this all dries. I do not want to smear any of my coloring. Just forgot I also want to color this little heart red. Because he's going to go, or this little heart's going to go on the chest of this little guy. Or this guy. Doesn't really matter. Either one. I'm not sure which one I used on my card. Oh yeah, I used I used this little guy in the corner. So yeah. It's dry. I do not want to smear these again. And then with the die cuts, so I'm going to show you how these line up. So you find the little little guy that's waving. And then because I positioned these all in my um, Misty, how I wanted them, I can just take my coordinating dies and line these up. So like here's our little Christmas guy. And since I didn't color these especially, it's a good way to line them up. And then you can see that everything lines up pretty perfectly. So put that like that. And so then we can die cut these guys. So same as we did last time, 
get our little die cut machine. I'm still not entirely convinced those are dry. So a little worried about that still, but we'll see. And I'm just gonna put the, these in my die cut machine and run them through. So, so then we'll see how much again. And haven't smeared anything yet. So we're just gonna put these through our machine again. That was the wrong way. That should have been that way, but that's okay. They still cut. And that's the last thing we're cutting. So we're gonna put our die cut machine away. Move our card back over here. And we can start laying these guys out. So there's our little our little guy with the scarf. He did not get smudged this time. So that's good. And those are all the things I need right now, so I'm just gonna leave these go. And then I will put my little extra pieces in a bag so I can use them for future cards. Move my die cut plates out of the way. And we've got our little Yetis. So I already said it's too early for Christmas, so we're not gonna use that guy. And then I wanted to use this little guy. And then we're gonna put the heart on him actually. So we do need our little heart. We almost lost that. So we need our little heart. You can just use like your little EK tools thing if you need to, to cut that out. And we're gonna just put a little glue dot on this heart using our EK tools, because this is such a tiny piece. Definitely get yourself a pair of little tweezers. It helps a ton when you're working with really tiny pieces like this. And then I'm just gonna use my glue dots. Find a new piece. There's one. And so I'm just gonna use my glue dots. And then I'm just gonna put this on this little guy's chest. That was really cute. And just press that down. So that's what we're doing for that guy. And then I'm gonna use, I don't know if I wanna use glue dots or use that little like Tombow stuff. I think I'm gonna use this Tombow stuff for the, the Yetis. Cause I really liked this Tombow glue. I thought it was great. I haven't smudged anything yet guys. Hope I don't. I don't want to smudge anything. I think this guy is so cute. This little this little stuff. Okay, so we're gonna put him kind of in the center. And I'm just gonna put a block on top to let him dry. I don't want to smudge him. And then our little Yeti down here. Put some glue on him. This Tombow glue stuff is amazing. And he's raised up a tiny bit too. So I'll put a little put a little block on him too. He might need a little bit more of a block. I don't use my stamp blocks much anymore, but I do use them for holding stuff down, which is good. Okay, so there's that. So we're just holding this down. And then while that's going on going to move these off to the side because you don't really see them. But this is you need to see. So this is my banner and I'm going to cut it here and so this line, this um, edge line will align with the card. You'll see what I'm going to do in a second. So I'm going to stamp this 
and I already have my stamp from earlier and it has your my beast friend which I think is just too cute and so I'm gonna ink this up I got really little last time I did have a piece of scrap paper and I don't know where it went so we're just gonna hope for the best I did good put that off to the side and then I'm gonna cut this to fit so our little guy should be down pretty well and then we're just gonna move this over and then we're gonna trim it and I just use a little pencil because I don't feel like getting my trimmer out draw my little lines so I don't get it crooked it's very hard to cut straight sometimes and I'll line that up And then I'm going to actually use foam tape for this instead of the mono-liquid adhesive glue. And so with my foam tape, I don't know what brand this is. Um, I don't love it, but it works. And so I'm just going to measure out what I need basically and stick this to the back. And what I don't love about this stuff is that it doesn't peel off the best. Kind of takes some finagling. But once you get it going, then it's fine. There we go. It's just really tough to get the backing off. And then we're going to line this up. I kind of like it up here. I have a few like little pencil marks from when I cut that. So we'll just erase those. And again, I just used craft paper for this. And that's our completed card. So yeah, pretty simple. Um, I really like this set. It's pretty adorable. Um, very cozy for fall and for winter. And uh, this paper pack is great. Um, so again, if you want any of the paper that I used, it's Jen. Uh, Hadfield, warm and cozy. Got it at Joanne's. Um, I don't think it was on sale. They also have a 12 by 12 of this. Um, but with card making, I like the smaller prints. If I do the scrapbooking size, then it's like way too big. But yeah, so this is the one that we just made. And this is the one that I made earlier. So pretty similar. Just different paper and different Yetis. So. Let me know if you have any comments. Let me know what you think. Highly recommend getting this set. I think it's going to get a lot of use this winter. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.